Thank you, uh, Soba, for your introducing me. Uh, just today, uh, I will introduce you about uh, the implementation of water surveillance and the response in Somalia region. Uh, just my outline is like, uh, just I will start with the introduction, then we will look at why integrated human and animal disease surveillance, then cost effectiveness, then I will uh, just try to describe about um, one health, the case of other districts in Ethiopia. So as introduction, we are just the surveillance is uh, is just ongoing systematic analysis of uh, data and the interpretation and the use data for health uh, action, uh, but there is no consensus or uh, defini uh, cons uh, consensus definition for uh, integrated human and animal uh, de surveillance or for one health, uh, but many authors define in, in different way. For example, some of them they define like a system that uh, the, that collect da data in multiple domain that may include environment, animal, and the public health sector. So, in some authors, they also define as focusing on the collaborative efforts between the public health sector and the animal health sectors, uh, focusing on the wildlife and domestic animal. So, in general, this always require interdisciplinarity. So the, the thing is we need to have uh, people from the different discipline as well as multi-sectoral, that is from the different sector. So that means that if we have maybe in one institution or one sector, if we have many discipline, we cannot say that that's one health because at the end of the day, the response or maybe animal vaccination is, uh, uh, livestock is responsible for animal vaccination. Maybe the other people may have different responsibility. So we need to have, uh, interdisciplinarity, but multi-sectoral is also a must. Uh, so the important thing is just uh, collaboration is resource consuming. So we have to think about the resource and uh, uh, do it the thing in optimal performance and the cost effectiveness. So why integrate human and animal needs surveillance? This is uh, our one health surveillance. So as we are aware that 75% of emerging disease uh, the animal and out of that 61 uh, of all pathogens are developing. So there is always uh, probability that emerging disease will occur and that the probability that it will be zoonotic is also very high. So that's why we focus on, we want to focus on one health. And also if you consider maybe the public health burden of the zoonotic disease in developing country, there are, for example, rabies, anthrax, these are high burden. So we have to think apart from the pandemic or COVID-19 or any other emerging disease, we have to think also about the, the burden of the zoonotic disease in the area and find out the solution for that. So the other important thing is um, maybe the ecological uh, change or environmental change. Because of this, maybe the people are going or close contacting to the inhabitants of the wildlife and that there is possibility of the sharing uh, pathogen between wildlife and uh, maybe human being, or maybe the pathogen may transfer to the wildlife, then to the domestic animal, then to came to the human. So uh, uh, climate change is one of the important things that, that uh, um, make us to think about the one health. And the lesson learned from the previous disease, we are aware of that, uh, the economic cause of the COVID-19 SARS and the MERS. So for this one, when we are talking about the emerging disease of the TV, Surveillance is the call, always. For prevention of control, surveillance is the call. And uh, many organizations like the WHO, OIE, FAO, all recommended uh, one, health, uh, one health surveillance or one health approach just to, to address the challenge that can be uh, arise between, between human, animal, and the environment interface. So, and there is also that one health believed to be efficient and the cost effectiveness. So if you see here, for example, on this picture, you will see the uh, WHO director, uh, Tedros Adhano, uh, at the middle, um, OIE director, uh, Monique, and uh, on the right side is uh, uh, Grazino da Silva, is uh, FAO uh, director. So after signing agreement on the multi-sectoral uh, collaboration to address challenges that can arise between human, animal, and uh, environment. 
So the other one that is cost effectiveness, we have to think about the cost. So the cost that should be considered are maybe labor cost, operational cost. So the people go to the field, collect some, then do the surveillance. This cost should be considered in one cost associated with the surveillance activity. For, for them, we have the cost in Ayman when uh, surveillance is separate, as well as we have also cost for public health. So we need to consider these both costs, and we have to consider also maybe um, just the, um, the, the, the information sharing, cost that is associated with the information sharing, like meeting and anything, everything should be considered. And the cost associated with intervention also has to be considered when we are estimating the cost effectiveness, because cost effectiveness of the one system to say that this system is efficient than the other one, we have to think about the cost effectiveness. So the post will cost saving area are shared human resources. For example, in the Giga laboratory, we have staff that can do uh, human, that can diagnose human sample as well as animal sample. So material resource sharing, so at least we can share the diagnosis equipment or laboratory facilities like PCR or ELISA, uh, reader or any material. This can be shared in, in one lab. Uh, also, we have to think about also public health consequence related costs like cost of hospitalization. So, whenever uh, let's say zoonotic disease occur or someone infected with the zoonotic disease, there is cost of uh, uh, hospitalization is there. So, just this slide is to show you um, how the cost is very high if the disease is not detected earlier in, in, in animals. So, as you can see from the graph, so if the disease is detected in animal or wildlife, the cost is high, but once it reaches to the human being, the cost may be very high. So we have to uh, establish a system that can easily detect uh, zoonotic disease or zoonotic pandemic so that uh, the cost associated and the public health can be reduced. Uh, so with this, I will come to the, my case, implementing integrated community-based health surveillance, uh, the case of the other districts. So with this, we have the other districts. The climate is semi-arid, and uh, the total population is around um, seven uh, seven hundred twenty-seven thousand. So there is uh, no uh, the livestock population is around seven hundred seven hundred twenty-seven thousand, whereas human population is estimated around ninety-nine thousand. So the objective was just uh, a rationale and the general chief. More than 80% of the Somali are pastoralists, and uh, zoonotic disease are usually endemic. So there is high, uh, there is high risk of the transmission of the zoonotic disease between human and the animal, or vice versa. And the other important thing is uh, there is a weak communication in disease uh, information sharing between human and the livestock sectors. So the general objective of the study was just to assess the feasibility of uh, one health surveillance and the response to introduce one health surveillance and response in Somalia region as part of the surveillance system. So to do this, we had just some um, approach. So we set up one health surveillance and response unit. So we have office in Arande that uh, human and animal health experts sit together and look, uh, do the surveillance system or collect the data from the um, community health workers. So we train community animal health workers as well as community human health workers and health staffs on these surveillance, especially on integrated these surveillance system. Uh, then we link all animal health and the human health staffs at all levels. For example, we have at the community level or at the Kavale level, uh, the smallest administration of the Somali region, we have the village or Kavale. So in that we have one uh, community animal health workers as well as one human health workers who can share the data. Then at the district level, we have also the staffs already uh, two experts, then at the regional level, the data can share in that way. The disease usually start at the community, so we start from at the community level. Uh, so usually uh, both the, uh, the uh, community animal health workers are community and the community health workers are the one who are supposed to report the, the disease in animal as well as in human, and also any unusual health events with more than two cases. So there are lists of the disease that should be reported or not have disease in the Ethiopian health surveillance system, both in animal and as well as in livestock. So with this, we include in the surveillance system as well as uh, any unusual health events. 
to follow up a known disease, like uh, a known current disease that has been occurred in Somalia region uh, last year. So uh, the other important thing was just we held inception workshop with relevant stakeholders. This is important because when you're doing the surveillance, the response is very important. So as a project, we cannot do anything with the report with the response. So for this, we we talk to the stakeholders at least to involve in the in the response and to have a general understanding about the integrated surveillance system. So these are list of the nocturnal human and animal disease in Ethiopia. On the right side, we have uh, human disease. On the left, on the left side, we, on the left side we have human disease. On the left, on the right side, we have um, let's say animal disease. So there are diseases in both systems that, that are um, nocturnal disease. The disease that should be reported to the government if the if the if any outbreak occurs. For example, we have anthrax. On both sides, we have rabies, we have even influenza, Rift Valley fever, SARS, and any uh, unusual health events. So with this, we can think about how we can align uh, the existing surveillance system with the one health surveillance system. So just this is a schematic diagram showing one health surveillance and response, the one that we have established. So for example, on the left side, we have only animal health surveillance. On the right side, we have human health surveillance system. This is the existing system. We have already existing system. So what we did is we try to link the surveillance system at different level. For example, community animal health workers with community health, community health workers. Uh, let's say Warada vet officer with Warada health officers. Regional livestock with regional livestock. So federal, the Ministry of Federal with Ministry of uh, Federal. So the report is uh, start from the lower or from the from the ground from the committee, then go up to the higher uh, jurisdiction level. So what we did is just linking both systems. We didn't create any uh, parallel system. Just we are working how we can bring uh, those systems together so that they can share the information and do uh, the intervention together. So this with this just we. We established one health uh, unit. For example, this is the unit. We have um, Ahmed and uh, Harane. They are, Ahmed is animal health expert. Harane is also a uh, public health expert. So they sit together and they receive the report from the cows, these guys. Uh, for example, this lady is from one of the cabaret, so-called Hodan. And uh, uh, this is also a community animal health workers. So they are together at the cabaret level so that they can send the report to the uh, Halane and Ahmed, the coordination unit. Here is the coordination unit. The communication was just directly by, by phone, by, 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 by call, uh, sometimes by text, but usually by call. We have been established the uh, smartphone application. So we have also two staff, as you see already uh, here assigned. So the surveillance team at the company, we have also at the company level. So we train after we start, after we establish the unit and uh, link we train the people, 50 community animal health workers as well as 15 community health workers on a DD surveillance. So we train uh, together uh, about the integrated surveillance system, the, about the zoonotic, how they have to report whenever they identify a zoonotic disease, the importance of the reporting, this all thing. So they train together. This is how well, while human uh, cows and the community and various workers are just um, training together. So that we also do a safety workshop, as I already said, just this is for uh, 46 participants to participate from the different uh, sector. This is this picture also shows you sensitization of the system. Uh, for example, we sit with the community and the talk with them how the system can be effective. For example, uh, the human health uh, surveillance, the human health uh, surface is poor, the animal surface is poor. So how we can improve, what should be done, what could the community role should be. We discuss this all thing with the community and they include uh, their thoughts on, on the system. Uh, so this is reporting and the response. Uh, so these are the diseases that are reported. We have, uh, um, 
decide human disease, decide animal disease. So we have malaria, dysentery, typhoid, measles, uh, maybe suspected case of the uh, polio. On the human side, we have CCBB kind box. So whenever this outbreak occurred, the community reported to the, um, to the uh, let's say to the unit and uh, sample were collected for the etiology identification. So this is to show you the diseases that are reported. For example, camel box here, uh, CCPP, uh, typical case of lumpy skin disease. This is wary neck unknown sind camel syndrome. While we are collecting sample, this is unfunctional animal health post. So uh, etiology identification is also very important. We did for any case that are reported, we have collect sample, do the diagnosis at the regional lab or at the national lab for human as well as for the livestock. So just this graph is to show you surveillance response timeline. We measure the time taken from the notification to intervention for some disease, especially for livestock. As you can see, brucellosis, camel box, uh, camel, uh, camel box, uh, complex camel pneumonia, LCD. So if you see, for example, at the national level, uh, maybe the result obtaining is very delayed. Maybe sometimes we go to two months or maybe sometime to, to uh, yes, to, um, yeah, to, to 20 days or, or like that. And if you see the intervention, for example, for Shiba and the Good Box, it, after the disease occur, uh, three months later, after three months later, the intervention was initiated. So this means that after the thing become history. So this is also one of the big challenges. So one of the big challenges that we have seen is just delay uh, response. But if the diagnosis is takes place at the regional level, still the time is a little bit shorter, two days or three days. But the challenge is at the regional level, we the, 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 the diagnosis capacity is somehow uh, very low. That's why we, we were sending the sample to the national lab. So just to, uh, since the animal health as well as human health service are poor, we talk to the community and uh, find out the solution for this. So with this, with the community, we, we just agree to introduce community emergency fund as well as cow surface. So whenever there is an outbreak, we they uh, they send a report as well as they do the, the, the intervention. For example, through the community emergency funds, fund they try to manage, uh, let's say, ambulance services. So they have uh, saving and credit system, so called hackbot. With that, they, the people agree that to contribute 50, 15 or one dollar per household. So with this household, they collect money among them. So whenever there is an outbreak or uh, some, let's say, um, emergency case, they can organize the ambulance services. So with this, we try to at least maintain, uh, try to deal with certain emergencies. Uh, the other important thing is cow services. For example, we gave them the drug for free and it was cost recovery mechanism. So the cows, they will treat and uh, the household or the pastoral should pay. So that in this way, the surface will be sustainable. Uh, for example, if you see the cow surface, they treated 56,000. We have uh, the beneficiaries of the emergency fund is around 676 households. Uh, livestock vaccination for, let's say, for sheep and the goat box, LCD, where uh, that took place. And for example, the following missile outbreak, uh, 40,000. Uh, children were vaccinated. So we also had awareness creation regarding these like TB, Rift Valley fever, brucellosis, and now and, uh, and many others. So this is just to show you that, that the surfaces, for example, this is during the beginning of the project. So after one year, uh, half year. So this guy, Osman, is we, we gave them a starter kit. Then later on, after one year, he maintained. The, the drug and he keep giving the surface. This is part of the sustainability. So we have here cows treating the animal. We have here uh, community health workers doing awareness creation, uh, measles vaccination. Here we have vaccination against sheep and goat box. 
So this is just to show you the Jujiga Wahnesh Laboratory inauguration ceremony. Uh, this is the only lab that uh, may be doing COVID-19. So it's inaugurated by the president of the Somali region, or the, the middle, and the president, acting president of the Jujiga University. Uh, the important thing is collaboration between the professor and the sector in this area. So what they do is just uh, to show you this, there is collaboration between the uh, house and the community health workers at the village level. Uh, for example, when outbreak of the mass abortion occurred, they started uh, communicating between uh, communicating about the disease at the, at, the, at the Kauai level, so that if maybe the case could be Rift Valley fever, so the people are aware of that and that they will not get infected. Uh, this is what we did. The other important thing is, uh, for example, we have the data. So data were collected, shared, and analyzed at all levels. So whenever they were the data, data is maybe analyzed and shared to the districts as well as to the regional government, depending on the nature of the disease. So just this is to show you when critical valley fever or brucellosis occurred. The people usually try to communicate at this level and they try uh, to do awareness creation. So the disease will not uh, um, uh, uh, transmit it to the public. But the important thing is just most of the people, they are, uh, we have, uh, let's say, both disease. We have uh, uh, disease that are under the list of the not favorable list, but the, the, the health professionals. Of both, they even they were never they were not aware of that. So uh, the challenges and the opportunity. So the number one challenge I, as I already mentioned is was uh, delayed diagnosis and this was the number one challenge uh, for human and animal service. So for example, we are talking about the collaboration, but the challenge is if the animal service is poor, human animal health is also poor. Uh, it's difficult again to to just to be very effective to have robust uh, let's say uh, integration between the, the the sectors. So the other challenge is silos, funding silos, and the communication cross communication silos, lack of institutionalization. The other important thing challenge was political willingness. So commitment of higher authorities is also uh, very important. There are also many things like, for example, technical barrier standardization and harmonization of data collection, analysis, uh, ethics of the data. There are many, many challenges that we need to deal with it. But this is something which is uh, new and something that we learning through process and in time. So uh, we have also opportunities. For example, uh, already, as I already mentioned, the WHO, OIE, and FAO, they create much better collaboration. So all member countries, they can get a fund from uh, or WHO or OIE for one health implementation. And we have also, because of this, we have now a lot of projects. Here, JSF, Johi, these are based on the recommendation of the OIE or, or international organizations. So we have the existing system of human and animal surveillance we are on ground. So we want to bring this together. That's what we need. So as Ethiopian government, we have one health strategic document, which is already on approved, I think, or on the draft. So which show, which just describe maybe the role and the responsibility of each sector, what should be done at district, at district level or at the federal level, this all are there, how fund can be mobilized. So we have already the strategy. We have also memorandum of understanding between relevant, relevant sectors like environment, public health as well as uh, less, uh, uh, animal health. So we have also uh, one health training programs. So there are, uh, at the GGK University, we have uh, um, one health uh, master education curriculum. Uh, so the graduate may contribute to the policy development, um, maybe standardization of the data collection or, the, or doing uh, further research is on, on one health. So we have a lot of opportunities. So conclusion, so we, we observe that uh, operationalization of one health surveillance and response is somehow feasible. Uh, 
the use of the existing system, the presence of one health unit, the network between health staff, engaging the community, and the presence of one health task force, this all contribute to the success of one health surveillance and response. Uh, always political commitment is very important, and uh, we have to also demonstrate cost effectiveness of the system. So while surveillance should just should be um, faster in the early detection, efficient in the disease control, and uh, uh, just uh, lead to cost saving. So in that way, we can uh, at least convince the politician. So there are also uh, traditional barriers between sector and the silos. This will be avoided. Uh, thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much, Yaya. Yeah, yeah. um, mm. I still can't see. Can you maybe stop sharing your screen? OK. Uh, OK, thank you. Yes, and then we can see. OK, great. Um, so now is the time to open up the floor for other people to ask questions. There's already a couple of questions in, in the, the chat box, but, um, but let me first of all open, open the floor for other people. You can either raise your hand and I'll ask Sabah to help me in case I don't see those hands, um, or you can just drop a, a question into the chat box. So I start with the chat box or? <laughs> yeah, I'll read it out. So, so we've got a question from Lisa. Lisa, do you want to unmute or? Uh, yes. And, and ask your question. Hi, everybody. Uh, I can, but there were many questions before me, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll come back. I, because one of them was me and one of them was Tomeskin, wow. I think, and, and we'll come back to those. Okay, so yes, thank you very much, Yaya, for really, I found this presentation very, very good, very clear, and really the, the presentation and the work you've done, I find it really wonderful and a great example of, of One Health approach. So really, I was very impressed. Um, I have so many questions, but what I was asking there is, you mentioned cost effectiveness at the end. Yes. Uh, do you measure it or do you have a plan to measure it quantitatively? Uh, yes, we have. Yeah, I think we have a plan to measure, but we haven't yet measured it. But we are planning to measure the cost effectiveness. Okay, and how would you approach? Um, uh, probably the cost is easy, but the efficiency, yeah. how would you measure that? So I think this is somehow very challenging. Uh, number one, what we would like to do is. Um, uh, just there is uh, surveillance. So, for example, when, uh, whenever outbreak occur, usually the public health they do surveillance or outbreak investigation. Similarly, livestock also they do outbreak investigation. So, uh, whenever there is a you know, tick disease, if they go, if for example the public health go alone to the site. And the human, uh, let's say, animal has also go along the side, there is cost difference. So we want to see what is the cost sharing, what is the cost of doing outbreak, for example, zoonotic disease, by separate sectors. And what is the cost when they, they do the activity jointly? The other important that we need to measure is, um, let's say, the facilities. For example, we can share, uh, let's say, the lab, or maybe offices and equipment that we can share. Uh, but there are, I, I, I believe that there are uh, maybe a lot of questions, uh, but at the time being, what we are thinking is on operational costs as well as at the facility level. But the challenge is we cannot have a record for, for let's say, uh, what do you call uh, cost of hospitalization because of the, the consequence Mm. of the zoonotic disease. So that is our public health uh, exact impact is somehow challenging. So we are uh, still thinking on that, but at the moment we want to measure these things. Okay, okay, yeah, thank you. And my second question was about, since you have yeah, such a great case study in this district, yes. uh, what would be the plan to scale it up into other districts, maybe around the region or the country? Is there any experience? Um, yeah, thank you very much. 
This is also a very good question. Uh, the plan is uh, just to scale up at least to additional uh, two districts. Uh, so as soon as we, we, have, we have already started that one, so we'll see how, how the implementation will be. Uh, so uh, just we have also at AHRI 11, uh, we have uh, consultants, policy consultants who are working on the policy issues. So we want to uh, present our work or the finding to the um, to the higher authorities, so so that this can be scaled up to the to the whole region. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Lisa. And just to make it clear, I'm I'm holding off on my question and to Meskin because we're both past, part of the Heal project. <laughs> so no. uh, we, mm -hmm. I, I want to prioritize um, the other people on the call. So I'll put it over to Farah next. Would you like to unmute and turn your video on and ask your question? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Siobhan. Thank you, Dr. Yahya, for the nice presentation. And congratulations for the nice work you are doing in, in, in the region. I think that's what the university means, just contributing to the community. Well, I, ha I have two questions for you. The <laughs> first one is, is the, is the data collection kind of digitalized or how do you collect the data? Is it digital form or is it kind of man manual? That's my first question. The, my second question is related to sustainability and is, is, the, is it the university who is doing all this work from the Kabale uh, uh, level uh, to the regional level? Is it the university that's coordinating this kind of uh, this surveillance system or it is the government only? If it is the, you know, the university who is handling the work, when maybe the, the project ends, what is your plan and how the, the thing can, how the government can own uh, the, the project in, in, in the future so they can scale up, as Lisa said. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Farah. Where are you, Farah, from Somalia? Yeah, I am. I am currently based at the University of Liverpool. I'm studying okay. there, but uh, I am. But I'm from Somalia. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Farah. Thank you. I think uh, that th these are very good question uh, about the data collection. Uh, just the data we have using just direct call. So the the, the system is direct call, and the people at the um, at the at the coordination unit they record. The cases, so it's, it's still it is direct call, but we want to uh, upgrade to app or applications. So this is the plan. But at the moment, it is direct call. Uh, that is the sustainability also one of the very important issues that we have to think about it. Um, uh, just it is uh, our role is just the coordination. For example, the people at the district level. The people at the government level, at the village level, all are from the government. They are uh, just part of their uh, normal job. We are not paying them anything. Uh, just we train them and uh, tell them how to do the surveillance. So in this way, still uh, somehow our role is just coordination. So collecting data and the, the system is there. So they can share to the district or as well as to the to the to the regional level, uh, but it's still, um, as you said, always the, the the sustainability is a question. So we will see together, and uh, just we try to make also, let's say, the response is very important. For example, if there is a disease, the cows, the community animal health workers, they should treat the animal. So we provide them a starter kit. So they we try to introduce cost recovery mechanism so that so that the system can be still sustained. But for the future, this is something that we have to think about it, as you already said. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Mara. Thank you, and I, I might uh, try to connect the two of you after 
after this meeting, because uh, Farah is one of our Horn Fellows, and I think he would have a lot to talk about between the two of you. Um, okay, so I will now turn it over to Tameskin, who okay. had a comment uh, or a question about how it links. Yes, to I the... can see. Yes, you ah, can see. Yeah, I yeah. can see. Tameskin, okay, do you, you want to just clarify? Are you still there, Tameskin? Yes, yeah, Shivan. Uh, Go ahead. How are you, Shivan? Well, thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I think it's um, an excellent presentation and uh, more importantly with practical uh, operationalizations at, at, at lower level especially. Um, my point is about its practicality around uh, collaboration and uh, integration is, uh, you have also mentioned is a challenge section. Um, the challenge is zero. Uh, it's also recognized by the government. So how is the collaboration, especially at regional, uh, at federal level, I know it very well, uh, but how it is at, at sub-national or at regional level, especially in Ministry of Health, um, there is a system of um, HMIS, uh, which is Health Management Information System. Uh, I think that's a good platform. So how can you integrate with that system? Because it's it's uh, lined up from um, health center to, to uh, federal ministry of health, which is very uh, interlinked and it's advances uh, for the last ten years. So, is there any any linkage uh, with the system? This is one. Uh, the second one is the cost recovery system. I think is also uh, would be another challenge. We have similar intervention. And we would be also uh, learning more on this uh, because there is community-based insurance and maybe uh, cost recovery. So how do you approach and how is really practical uh, during the intervention? Uh, because I assume that it would be very challenging. And I would like to learn more because this is something we have to learn for here. And um, uh, maybe working uh, around that. And we may have also even uh, a follow-up engagement on uh, how we learn each other and how we integrate each other. Uh, but maybe for now, I would like to hear more uh, on those two issues. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Tabaskan. I think these are also very uh, good question and important thing. Uh, something that we have to think about it. Um, it is, just as you already mentioned, maybe uh, surveillance has at, uh, surveillance has a different level. We start from the government, then district, then region, then federal. So all they should be linked just to have very effective surveillance and response system. So for the time being, uh, we we want to, for example, to be very honest at the federal level. Still, there are, as you are aware, there are many. Uh, activities or things that are going on just to bring human and animal health uh, together. But for this research, um, uh, the role of the federal is somehow, for example, is, uh, is, is somehow limited. We are not at that level. Now we, we started at the district level as well as at, up to the regional level. But at the end of the day, we went to where we are writing the policy brief we want to include also maybe how uh, the federal as well as the regional should the surveillance of the both system should be collaborated. So just uh, we are just working now at, 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 at the ground level. We didn't move up to the federal. So I think this is also uh, something that we need to think and uh, we have to work together. Uh, the other important thing is, as you already mentioned, community emergency fund. This is uh, Somali region, they have their own traditional uh, saving and credit, so-called hagbat, that they used to uh, just when there is uh, uh, expenses for for nail or for let's say for ceremony, wedding, this sort of thing. So we try to just use this system also for health for health uh, purpose. So we we meet the community, talk to them. And uh, just they uh, just they propose this idea. Uh, then, as the Johi, we provide uh, some input, some capitals incentive 
so that uh, then the, the community try to contribute uh, for that um, uh, the saving. And now uh, they have uh, uh, around uh, I, around uh, more than let's say uh, two thousand uh, Ethiopian members, and uh, they are managing uh, some emergencies like uh, maybe labor or any emergencies. As you know, in in, in Somalia region, the health system is very poor. There is no road access. The ambulance are very limited. They have to pay money for the fuel to maybe to go to hospital. So the people are poor, they don't have money uh, ready. Now with this community emergency fund, they have that money and they use for um, whatever the emergency and they compensate. So this is the way, but still this has to be supported by the government and it has to be aligned by, by the government strategy so that it can be uh, sustainable. Uh, the other important thing is COWS, Community Health Workers uh, Recovery System. Uh, so the animal health service is poor, as you may be aware, in, in pastoral area. Uh, we don't have that much animal health posters. So cows are the one who uh, providing the services. So we give them a starter kit so that they can generate the money or if create revolving money, revolving fund, and they can buy again, 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 and again, and they can keep the service. Uh, so this is what we want to recommend in the policy. And that there are also many, many things that need to be considered something that is out of our capacity, of course. Thank you. Tameskin, did you want to reply or that's okay? Yes, yeah, Shuma, uh, that's fine. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. I don't see any other hands up or uh, comments in the box. Um, so perhaps I, I can maybe move to my question. So, and I think it follows on, um, just talking about this connection between the, the community level, you know, the regional level, and then up to this, the federal level, as I say, um, in your diagram, where you'd mm -hmm. outlined the different stakeholders at the different levels, yeah. what was missing in that diagram was the, the technical working groups, which are the I things that are, yes. which are at the federal level, the integrated groups for you know, initiating response in an integrated way. Mm. Um, so trying to figure out how they fit in and and the lines of communication to those groups would also be a value because I, I'm not sure that they sit exactly under the ministries, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so so the other the other question and perhaps sort of flowing from that is yeah. and you pointed to this a few times is around the delay right, the delays in reporting. And I wanted to understand from your perspective, what do you think are the causes for those delays? You mentioned a three month delay uh, in, in, the, in the figure that you, you pointed to. And, and I've sat in, you know, the Anthrax technical working group meetings where they've talked about this delay as well. So I just like to understand more from your perspective, what do you perceive as the reasons for that delay? And what, yeah. and what kind of interventions might you consider to address it? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, so Baha, your name is about difficult. <laughs> okay, so I think these are also very important, good question and important thing that we need to think about them. For example, we have to fit somewhere uh, technical working group level. We are, as you already saying. We have also a steering committee. A steering committee is somehow higher than the technical uh, uh, working group level. Uh, now we are establishing at the, at the regional level uh, this technical uh, working group. Already we have the steering uh, one health steering committee at the regional level as well as at the federal level. So we need to fit also somewhere the technical group. So I have to think about that. But at the moment, uh, just the collaboration is at the office level uh, between the offices or the sectors. So we have to go down also to the technical working group so that they can contribute. Uh, the other important question is about the delay diagnosis. This is related with the, uh, let's say, uh, poor uh, animal as well as human health services in Somalia region. 
it is related with the uh, diagnostic capacity. Uh, so this is very challenging. We don't have the facility. For example, Adadle, uh, the district that we uh, conducted the, the surveillance is 600 kilometers away from the, the, the Jijiga, the capital city of the Somali. Then from Addis, maybe more than uh, 1,200 kilometers. This is very far. And uh, this we are submitting the sample from Adarle, let's say, to the National Lab. So the National Lab is very busy. They have a lot of work. The many sample coming from the um, different regions. So that's why usually the diagnosis is late. But the plan is we want now to make uh, full informational. Then we have uh, the DIGA uh, One Health Initiative Laboratory. So we want to make uh, fully functional that lab so that the diagnosis can be done, especially for emergency diseases, it can be done at the at the Jitika. So that the, the etiology may be the delay, we can improve the, at least the, the delays. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I can see um, Mikol also asked a quick question in there as well around the distinction between the health extension workers and the community health volunteers. Okay, um, yes. Okay, uh, health extension workers are already, health extension workers are already um, uh, employed by the government and they are paid. But the community health, health workers are their volunteers. So they are volunteers, they are within the community and uh, they usually stay with the community and um, they can especially um, uh, maybe pick up someone who is sick but not going to the health facility. So they are always with the community and they have also a close relationship with the health facilities. Great, thank you. Okay, so um, we are at three months, uh, sorry, three months, three minutes to, uh, mm -hmm. to two. Um, are there any other questions? If so, feel free to drop, uh, drop a comment in the box. I think Lisa has just unmuted, so perhaps she, or I'm shown her video, if you'd like to ask another question, Lisa. Just a very quick one about, um... The, you showed this office with the human and the animal health worker working together and that you created yes. that office. Yes. I was just wondering how does that work practically? Did they have before an office each and now they both sit in the same office all week long or do they have a day, I don't know, in the week where they have to meet? How does that work? Okay, then they, okay. They, they are from the different sector. So they have, uh, they had uh, different office before. But now we talk to the to the authorities at the district level, and uh, the, we have uh, in the health surveillance system we have focal person, one person who is responsible for the public health surveillance, and also in animal health we have also one focal person who is responsible to coordinate this all activity. So with with the authorities we agree that let us bring these two together and uh, sit together in the same office. Uh, so that they are doing just they have they are doing their own business or surveillance, but they also collaborating or they exchanging the information. So otherwise, the office everything is by by the district, not from us. We haven't rent rent office or anything, <laughs> but we provide them some incentives for the extra activities for uh, the people who are in the office. Thank you. Great, thank you. And that's some, something that uh, the HEAL project is also aiming to do in the areas that it's working in. Um, okay, so uh, I don't think there's any further comments. Um, so with that, we will thank you very much, Yaya, for providing your inputs. Um, and we look forward to ongoing engagements through the HEAL project with uh, Johi. Um, thank you. As we discussed last week, we'll mm -hmm. uh, hopefully be paying a visit uh, out there in the next couple of months uh, with Jakob. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much, everyone. Okay, thank um, you very much. Thank you. Off.